Hello my fishy friends, this is Wally with Supreme Aquaria. I know losing one of our fish is very troublesome, very concerning. It's not a good thing to go through. But if you would allow me today, I'm going to take a little bit of a different slant on this whole thing. Join me in the video today and let's add some levity to this whole subject matter. And let's have a little bit of fun if we can. Let's go ahead and slip into that time machine, go back about a month and a half ago. I had a good batch of a live beer called Lima Perugie. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I had about 30 babies or so. I captured the babies, I put them into a five gallon tank. They were growing nicely, feeding them two or three times a day. They were looking great, getting a little bit bigger. Everything seemed to be fine. Unfortunately, when I put the top on one day, one night, the top actually kinked the airline and the airline went off. I didn't know, or the air went off. I didn't really notice this for a couple of days, unfortunately, because it's on a top shelf. And unfortunately, I lost all of those babies. It's always, always a difficult situation. What do you do with the dead fish? Well, if you're like most people, you flush them or throw them in the garbage. And what did I do, being the resourceful person that I am? I had an idea. There has to be a bunch of things that you can do with dead fish. Let me think, what could we do with dead fish? Well, you could play games with them. You could use them as markers in bingo. Or you can use them as marbles in Mencala. Or how about using them as houses or hotels in Monopoly? What else can you do? Well, let's see. You could make jewelry if you're really skilled at it. How about giving those fish as a present to a very, very close friend? This is a stupid fish. Oh, okay. Oh, I know what you can do. Instead of the noodles and the macaroni that you use in art class and make a really nice art display, you could use dead fish. You could use dead fish as a bookmark. How about if you took those dead fish, strung them up, and made a Christmas ornament? Oh, Tina, that's so pretty. Mommy's so very proud of you. In a pinch, you can use it as a golf tee. What else can you do with dead fish? Let's see. You can the eat the dead fish. And of course, you can use them to send a message to a friend. That means Luca Brasi sleeps with the fishes. You just knew that there had to be a Godfather reference in there somewhere. So now you're asking, Wally, what did you do with your dead fish? What did you really, really do with them? Well, I'm going to show you, and I'm going to introduce you to something that maybe you've heard about, maybe you haven't, and it's called isopods. Isopods are probably the hottest thing in pet care right now. With hundreds of different species and color morphs, they're like beanie babies. Everybody has to get them. They're like Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. Isopods are really cool, but they have to eat. Let's take a look at some right now. I'm going to show you a couple of reasons why I think you should keep isopods. This is the hottest hobby, I think, right now around. And here's the reason. They're super easy to keep. This is a six quart container. Just some leaves, some substrate, a couple of pieces of wood. I feed them zucchini, squash, pumpkin. A Supreme isopod chow is a dry food. It's extremely easy to feed these guys. Let's take a look at a couple of these. And there we go. Let's see if we can get a close up. You can certainly see the real beauty of these isopods and they're not very big. This group is about a half of an inch or so in length, but there are some big ones out there. Some are easy to get babies from, some are a little bit dip more difficult. There's a little baby right there. But these isopods generally mature in less than six months and all of a sudden you start seeing some babies. Look at the variations of these guys too. I love the yellows on this uh, animal. This is Armadolidium gastroi or gastroi. There's some more babies. Let's take a look at another isopod. Okay, this one is called Cuberus murina papaya. And you'll see why it's called papaya in just a second. Again, lots of leaves, a nice dirt substrate, some sphagnum moss to keep one end moist. You always have to have one end of the uh, container moist. 
And here's these papaya. You can just see how many little babies are running around there. This is a full enclosure. This is only a six quart container too. Look at all those babies. The interesting thing is once we get to warmer weather in the spring, we'll start selling isopods again and this whole container will be sold out. If you're seeing little teeny tiny white things running around, those are springtails and those help clean this whole enclosure. Let's take a look at another isopod, and this is probably the granddaddy of them all. This is the big one. This one is called rubber duckies. Now these isopods just love to burrow, so it might be a little bit more difficult finding any of these. Let's give it a try. They don't necessarily hang on the wood most of the time, but now I see three of them sitting right there. Take a look at those. That's why they're called rubber duckies. This is everyone's favorite. What a cute little isopod. Let's go ahead and put these away and I'll show you one more isopod and we'll see if we can actually feed that isopod with some fish. We do a lot of reptile shows. We have a web page dedicated to isopods. You should take a look at them right now. We just cannot keep them in stock at all. And also make sure that you go over to the Supreme Gecko page. Yes, that's mine as well. And check out some of the videos on isopods. I think you'll find them as fascinating as I do. The link should be right here. I hope this really sparked an interest in maybe you keeping isopods. I greatly appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.